nine keys to spiritual growth. And in this series, we are we're looking at some keys. We're looking at some, some practical things that the Scripture gives us to help us to live the way He wants us to and to see the, the world the way He wants us to and to see His kingdom the way He wants us to. A lot of times we have this tendency as human beings to, um, to, to make the Word of God some elevated, high, unreachable, untouchable, like the people in, in the Word were somehow different than us or that somehow they had it easier or they had an extra dose of power to help them more even than we do today, and that wouldn't be accurate at all. These are regular folks. Now, they were used of God, but so are many of us. So are all of us called to be used of God, just like, just like the Peters and the Pauls and the, and the names that just come to mind. Uh, we're all supposed to be empowered by the Holy Ghost. We're all supposed to be uh, witnesses. We're all supposed to be just as equipped as anybody in the Word of God. A lot more equipped than those in the Old Testament that had not had yet the empowering of heaven in their life. And so um, I just want to help us to s today to see that um, every one of these people we look up to and these people that we, we see as somehow special were just ordinary people who were called of God, who responded to a call of God, and let God then touch them and help them and guide them into what we have in our hands today as an example. So uh, they needed to do all of these things just like we need to do all of these things. We talked first week about being a giver. The second week we talked about uh, living disciplined lives. And then we talked about adjusting to unexpected change and then having a genuine concern for others. These are all things that Jesus taught us by example. And then we talked about having a sense of humor and uh, and it's okay to laugh. It's okay to smile. It's okay to to have uh, to have some fun in life. God made us this way. God made us to have a sense of humor. God made us to laugh. And the Word of God says that we are to laugh, and that we are when we laugh, it's good like a medicine to our bodies. And we talked about that last last week. And so today we're going to talk about another key that all of us should keep in the forefront of our mind, and that is to maintain foresight, maintain vision in your life. And so uh, foresight, foresight, of course, is vision. And Proverbs 29 and 18 says, there, Where there is no vision, the people perish. The people have no forward motion. They have no future. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. The law, the word of God, is our future. Without the Word of God, we have no future. We may have more days ahead of us, but without the Word of God, we have no future. Your eternity is determined by the law of God. And so the Bible says those that keep the law and those that, that listen and obey the law of God, they have a future. They are happy. And you've got to be happy in order to uh, to, to really be what you need to be for God. God cannot use someone who is not healthy, happy, and able to handle what life is placing into their hands. If you're going to be used of God, you have to learn how to deal with life's hardships and issues the way the Bible says we have to. We have to learn to count everything that comes into our life as joy. Count it all joy. Well, I don't feel like being happy about it. It didn't say be happy, but it does say count it all joy because it's just a temporary situation. It's just a momentary issue. It's just something that's going to pass. How many times in the Word of God says it came to pass? It only comes into our life simply to pass through our life to make us what we need to be for the Lord. And so we count it all joy. Where, therefore, we can actually have a future in the Lord. Our future ought to be bright. It ought to be exciting. Foresight, the perception of the significance 
and nature of events before they have occurred. Foresight is saying, if, if this continues, this is what's going to happen. If this keeps being the way that things go, then this is how it's going to end up. Foresight is the perception and the significance and nature of events before they have occurred. The care in providing for the future prudence, the act of looking forward. Now, none of us are fortune tellers. None of us can tell the future. But I can tell you as a pastor, it's gotten pretty easy to look ahead for some folks based upon what they are setting as a pattern for their day-to-day. Sometimes it's good and exciting. Sometimes it's sad and depressing. Amen? Being able to see what a pattern produces, foresight. Being able to see what, what happens if I stay on the road that I'm on. One of the most exciting things about this lesson is you have the power in your life right now to determine your future. Now, you can't tell your future. He's the only one that holds tomorrow and knows tomorrow. But based upon the pattern of today, you can almost guarantee what tomorrow's going to be, at least what matters. You may not know exactly the detail, but you know where, what, what your course is, and you know what your destination is, and you know what you're living for. That's what we're talking about today. The biblical principle today is found in Luke 14, 28. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counteth the cost? Whether he hath sufficient to finish it. Verse 29, lest haply, after he hath laid his foundation, he is not able to finish it. All that beheld in the beginning mock him. Now, I don't know if it's true every time that people mock those who start something and don't finish. But I know one thing's for sure. In that person's mind, they are. When you start out to do something and you don't finish it, it doesn't complete, it's not over, it's over before it starts. People may or may not laugh at you. But inside... You assume everybody's laughing and mocking. And these are the things the Bible says hinder you from moving forward. They stop you from being able to to be able to go forward again. So the principle is this. Before you do something, you should measure the ability to finish that something. That's foresight. That's planning. That's a lot of just ordinary stuff. We talked Wednesday night about the ordinary side of fulfilling the will of God. If you weren't able to, to be here, you should go, go to Facebook, go to our website. You should watch that, sh- that, that show. I was going to say, you should watch that show. <laughs> you should watch that episode. You should get caught up because the will of God is a very, very practical element in our life. A lot of times you just do what your hand finds it to do. Bible says, and that's how you do it. You do it with all of your might, and he uses those efforts to lead and guide and place other opportunities in your life. And so, to whom much is given, much is required, and once we have been faithful in the little things, then he gives us greater things, but it all has to do with the little things that are right in front of you to do today. I'll tell you what's in front of us right now. What's in front of you right now, the most important thing in front of you today, right this minute, is to give your all in this service right here and right now. When it comes time to pray, pray. When it comes time to worship, worship. When it comes time to sing, sing unto the Lord with all of your heart. Do the normal, human, ordinary things right now so that you can continue to propel yourself into him in the future 
A lot of times, again, we romanticize those who are in the Word of God. And we, we build them up on a pedestal like, I'll never be like that. You may not. But you can strive every day to be the best you that God made. One of the most frustrating things I've watched young people do, they become ministry-oriented, they, they go get their license, they, they do all the, the work included and, and necessary, and then they... They try to be their pastor. They try to be their favorite preacher. They try to be the, the, the main, the biggest, the most successful in their world, rather than just being them. The happiest day of my life was the day that I decided, you know what? I can't be somebody else. I, I, I don't even know how to even try to be somebody else. I'm just going to be me. I'm going to be the best me I can be and let the Lord use me however he wants to use me. And whatever happens is in, in his hands. The Bible says that with foresight, with planning, with keeping on track, we can end up where he wants us to be. I would have never been here today talking to you if I had spent all my time trying to be somebody else part of the future part of the vision part of the success if you want to call it that of who i am today is just simply being faithful to who god called me to be that's the plan i can finish that i can do that you follow what i'm saying i can't i don't have it within me to to be somebody else i can't pep talk myself to to being like someone else or preach like someone else or teach like somebody else. I, I can't. But I can continue forward in the Word of God, the will of God, the purpose of God being who He's called me to be. So having a vision and moving forward has nothing to do with changing who God has called you to be. You've got to be you. When you get comfortable being you, other people will be comfortable being around you. If you're always busy trying to be someone else, you will put off everybody else by just you trying to be someone else. I will never say their name. I will never say what church they're from. You'll never get it out of me. Don't even try after church. But there are some folks that I know personally, some of you know personally, they, have, they comb their hair like their pastor. They, they, they wear the same suit as their pastor they 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 try to preach just like their pastor they and, and this is something that you've seen probably in your life that is the craziest thing i don't even understand that the lord knows my pastor was a whole lot better preacher than me a whole lot better teacher than me a whole lot better person than me at least that's what i want to believe but i'm okay being me you can be okay being you. Here's things that you can cast some foresight, some future to. If you're taking notes, you can plan, you can put invested time into your life's direction. Your life's direction is yours to do whatever you and the Lord decide is good for you. You've got that liberty. You've got that freedom. Beyond being American and having that freedom God gives you that freedom in his word to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling the Lord wants you to be a participant in your own salvation the Lord wants you to be the one that searches the scriptures that you would know truth and that you would you would take the whole counsel of God into study and you study to show yourself approved. The Bible says you can be a participant in your own life's future. And remember he said happy is he who lives by the law has a vision based upon what the word of God promises. That's the person that's the happiest. And then it dovetails right into the second one, which is spiritually, you can invest time, thought, prayer in your future of spirituality. You do not have to be 
a robot that shows up to get reprogrammed every Wednesday and every Sunday. You can live for God yourself. You can read the Word and take from that life. You can, you can pray and, and the Holy Ghost can just fall right there in your living room, right there in your own home, and you can be re restored and you can be renewed in the Lord all by yourself. You can live for God. It doesn't make me nervous. It doesn't make me, it makes me happy <laughs> when people will actually live for God themselves. And then we come together and we celebrate what God did all week. We celebrate the victories that we were, were, were given. We, we share the testimonies of, of what God did through our walk with Him throughout the week. You can do this. You can set your own future in God. One thing that we really should put some forethought into is, is our mental status. I know the jokes are just, they're, they're flowing like a river right now. But one of the most important things you can do is take care of your mind. I preach a lot about the downfalls of worry. We've talked about it. The downfalls of worry and the, 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 the thief, the robber that worry is in our spirit. We talk a whole lot about Letting the mind of Christ be in you. That means his thoughts, your thoughts, his, his future and his, his work being your outcome and what you can expect. Mentally, you have the responsibility before God to keep your own mind. That comes through prayer, that comes through through the Word of God, that comes through the people of God, that comes through, through being plugged in around here. I mean, this all works towards helping us mentally stay healthy unto God. It is your responsibility. When you start feeling down, depressed, whatever the, whatever the modern term is for it, to get yourself back on track. Nobody can help you if you don't help yourself. So go to prayer. Go to the Word of God. Call, call somebody. Call your pastor. Get a, hold of, get, get a hold of your own mental foresight. Because if you are blocked up up here, you will never move forward in anything of your own life or spiritual life. Socially, Socially, we have to work hard to get ourselves out of our comfort zones so that we would have friends and we would have relationships, we would have connections in our communities that God could use. If you stay hermitized in your home, is that a word? It ought to be. If you don't talk to anybody, socially speaking, if you don't have any relationships outside of your house and maybe coming up here and saying hello to a couple people, you're never going to win a soul. You're never going to be a testimony. You're never going to fulfill what Jesus Christ made sure we knew was the Great Commission. Well, I'd, li I'd like to win a soul. Okay. What is the future? What's the foresight? What does doing what you're doing right now every day set you up to be able to do in a month, in a year. You follow what I'm saying today? These are things that help us be spiritually connected. You've got to have connections. You've got to have friends. You've got to be able to connect with people so that socially you can influence people and have a sphere of influence to do anything with. If the only people you talk to are people that are already saved, you're going to have a real hard time winning someone to the Lord. Now, I know this is real simple, but it's amazing how many times we don't think about this. 
And then we come to church, we come to church, we, come, we hear messages, and, and we are stirred inside of our spirit. We're convicted of God when we hear preaching about winning the lost and having the answer for the world, right? But if we don't change what we're doing for the future, you will never change what you're doing day to day. Physically. Physically, we have to make changes. We have to stay on task. It is so easy. Oh, Lord, have mercy. It is so easy to lose sight physically and your body just run out of control. I'm not going to spend much time on that. Aren't you glad? A place to spend some time and some foresight is your time. Time is one of the most wasted commodities in the earth. Very few people manage time well. Very few. I struggle. Some weeks I struggle managing my time as efficiently as I should. I'll admit that. Your time is a commodity God expects you to manage and manage well because he says it is appointed for man once to die and then there's the judgment you have an appointed and allotted amount of time on this earth Jesus Christ was driven every single day there were times where he would get up early he would go to a mountain to pray he would he would stay up late and he would he would work hard with the time he had they would they would ask him beg him please stay with us and teach us and he said I must go he was driven by his window of time and as Christians today if we don't manage our time well we will waste opportunity after opportunity to do good things for the kingdom that somebody needs us to be able and available to do and then we can put foresight towards our destination. Where are you going? What are you doing? How much time have you invested in thinking about where you're going to be next year at this time? At the end of 2018, what are you doing? What's going on in your life? What are you accomplishing for the Lord? What are you doing with your time and your future? These are things that we would do well to go home and spend a couple of hours just with a notepad, especially here at the end of the year, just a, a notepad and say, where am I with this? What am I, what am I really accomplishing? Because it is so easy to go to bed on a Sunday night and wake up the next Sunday morning and a week be gone. Wake up on Monday morning for work, and before you realize it, you're going to bed on a Friday night. Just like that. Just like a vapor. Life is gone. And then you look back and you say, what did I accomplish? Well, I kept up. So what that means is you didn't move forward. You just tread water all week. I know some of these lessons are more fun than others, but this is probably one of the best lessons you'll ever hear about your real life. And what we're supposed to be doing for the Lord. Here's four acts of foresight. Listen to this. First, you perceive. First, you dream. You sit down with that notepad and you say, if I could go anywhere, if I could do anything, if I could do anything for the Lord, if I could, if I could be anything for the Lord, if I could accomplish anything, with these things, with my direction of life, my spiritual man, my, my, mentally, my mental st stability, my mental status, my social life, my, my physical body, my time, my ultimate destination, where would I place those things? You dream it, you perceive it, you, you let it be birthed in your mind, and then you plan 
how do I do these things? And then you prepare, how do I make these things happen? How do you align the resources, the time it takes, the energy it takes, the work it takes? And then finally, you pursue, you go to work. So you start by perceiving it, and then you come up with a plan, then you prepare, finally you begin to do, you pursue. Here's the benefits of having foresight and vision. Vision enables you to avoid some things. Listen to what Philippians 3, 12 through 14 says. Not as though I had already attained... Either we're already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Verse 13, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forth, Unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the, high, the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. As Paul is writing to the Philippian church, he is a very accomplished man. He has already been one of the great lawyers of the law he's already been a great a great and a trusted scholar he has built churches and planted churches and caused churches to grow and, and and things to happen even in his absence can you imagine pastoring from a distance where you're pastoring by letter where you're working by the work of written communication to a church but he was successful, greatly successful at it. God's hand was on him. But for him to say, I've already been through a lot of life. I've already been beaten. I've already been put in prison. I've already been shipwrecked. I've already, all of these things have happened in my life. And I'm still walking. I'm still marching. I'm, 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 not, I'm not downtrodden. I'm still moving forward. And for that man to say the words, I count not myself to have apprehended. I think of some of our elders who are still living for God strong today. I think about people who I think of them as just a complete shoe-in. I mean, they, they, they've got the life. They've, they've got the... The testimonies, they've, they've got the priorities right. They, they, they're, they're doing it faithfully, and they're as good as walking on streets of gold. One of the worst things you can ever do to yourself is to think that you have made it. You can't. Young, old, successful in the eyes of the world, successful in the eyes of the church, doesn't matter. The greatest curse to your future is to have counted yourself as attained. Paul, one of our greatest examples, was just an ordinary man. He actually made tents. He was a home builder on the side to help pay his way. He wasn't even a full-time minister. And we place him up on this pinnacle, this, this great, great throne of greatness, and I understand why we do that. But at the end of the day, his success, just a normal guy, but his success came from this statement. You can't look forward if you think you have already attained. Can't reach forward if you think that you've already made it. He says, I press toward the mark. There's something in us as we finish out this year and we move into another year here in this next couple of weeks. It should renew us. 
to look forward. Not that we've attained anything. Not that we've made it. Not that we've got it. We press. You don't press towards the things of the earth. Things of earth are just necessary building blocks. They're just scaffolding. Cars, houses, jobs, positions, money. If you, if you go after those things, the Bible says you will be miserable. But here's what he pressed for. He pressed for the mark for the high calling of God. He pressed to be a better Christian, a better man of God. He pressed to spend more time in prayer. He pressed to understand the word of God better. He pressed to be a better disciple and a better apostle and a better witnesser to those. He, he pressed to be a better soul winner. He pressed to be a better man of God. He said, I don't, I don't really care about the things of this world. I, I know how to live with abundance. I know how to live with nothing. Our, our focus cannot be the things of this earth. It has to be the things of God if we're going to move forward in Him. Here's some pitfalls if we don't have vision. You make mistakes. You make dumb mistakes, if I can say that. You make foolish mistakes if you don't have a good foresight looking forward in God. You secondly fall, you find yourself in pitfalls like laziness, complacency, loss of purpose, and cynicism. That's right, pastor said it. Cynicism. Well, I'm doing better, I'm doing as good as anybody else up at that church. I'm doing, I'm doing, as, I'm doing as good as, as I can considering all the stuff I've got to get done every day. Those are words of somebody who doesn't have foresight set on the things that mark in Christ Jesus. Disadvantages. You fall down in disadvantage. You lack, I, I lack you start looking at what you don't have instead of what you do have. I don't have the talent. I don't have the ability. I don't have opportunity. I don't have resources. If I had the money someone else had, if I had the position someone else had, if I had the opportunity someone else had, I could be more successful than I am today. See, what happens is you've lost your foresight. You've lost your future vision. You've lost your, what you're driving for. And you're stuck looking at your present surroundings. Here's some ways, here's a, here's a way to enable you to achieve. The calling of God in your life, just that. The fact that God loves you, that God called you, that God is doing the work in you and through you. Ought to encourage you every single day. That ought to fuel your fire every day. That you can have a little talk with Jesus and tell him all about it. And he'll hear your cry. If you could do that, if you could remember that, it will rekindle your future in him. Then the Lord will enable you to use the resources you do have. The talents you do have, the ability you do have, the opportunities you do have, the time that you do have. He'll help you use them to the fullest potential. And then finally, he'll bring fulfillment and reward to your life through achievement, positive influence on others, and the work of him through you making a difference. Rewards. Most of our reward is not seen on earth. Most of our reward is reserved for us on the other side. You may not get the pat on the back and you may not get the handshake. You may not get the certificate that you think you did need to get down here on this earth. But I promise you the Lord is a better bookkeeper 
than anybody can even imagine. If he collects the tears of the saints, something tells me he also knows the hours that you spent in prayer, the hours you spent working for him, the time that you have invested. Of course he knows and tracks everything. And then finally heaven. I mean heaven is the ultimate reward. Let's not lose sight of that. To make it to heaven, it doesn't really matter what I have to go through on this earth. 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty eight. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. He promises us. Your labor is not in vain. Your labor is tracked and it's accounted for. There's a reward waiting for you. So let's finish this lesson up like this today. There's six enemies of foresight. Number one, we've already mentioned it's a sense of accomplishment. The moment you think you've done it, the moment you think you're there, is the moment that you are then crippled to move forward. Secondly, a, a sense of failure or frustration. If you get your eyes on the wrong things, you will frustrate yourself. You will capitalize and you will focus on the failures. One of these failures and one of these results is just being tired, which goes back to maintaining healthy mental and healthy body and healthy management of time if people would keep their minds straight in prayer in the word if people would keep their time straight that would alleviate a lot of the fatigue that happens when we rush around trying to do the things that are required of God that's I just throw that in for free but if you can if you can manage things a lot better you can end up being a lot more successful, and that's true across the board. Number three, the fear of the unknown keeps people many, many times from looking forward and pushing forward. Number four, afraid of the cost. Some folks are so secure, they don't want to disrupt their security. Number five, the feelings of inadequacy. I'm not talented enough. I'm too old. I'm too young. All those things. Number six, distracted by the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Here's the words of a man with foresight. Brethren, I count myself, count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark of the high calling in of God in Christ Jesus. Don't ever let yourself think you're finished. You've got to forget the past. I have been saying that for three weeks. I wish y'all would get it. It has, been in, it has reoccurred in my notes at least three times the last three weeks. You've got to forget who you've been delivered from. Don't let you th yourself think in your past you've accomplished enough. You've got to reach, you've got to stretch, you've got to extend yourself. You've got to move beyond the limits and the levels that you've already accomplished. You've got to press toward the mark. I know I've said a lot of things today, but it is imperative that we continue to grow in the Lord, every one of us, every one of us. The age, the location, the, the place you find yourself in life, it doesn't really matter at all. We all have the calling in our, in our foresight. We all have that calling of God. We all have that reason for living. We all have that purpose. Until His Appointed time takes us from this earth. It's safe to assume he still has a purpose for me. He still has a reason. He still has something 
great for me to do in his kingdom. Lord, today I thank you for our time of of talking about you. I thank you, Lord, for this pastor's class this morning. And I ask you, God, to challenge us, Lord. I'm, I'm challenged this morning. God, several points have really hit me this morning very hard that I have to go home and look at again, Lord, especially coming into 2018. I've got to look real hard at some things. And God, I ask you to help me with that. I ask you to help us with that. Lord, let all of us be honest before you today. Let all of us be transparent before you today so that you can move in our life and that you can help us to be the people you've called us to be and accomplish the things you've accomplished through us already. Thank you for your help. Thank you for being God. Amen. Amen. Let's maintain some foresight. Let's get some vision out in front of us.